Okay, welcome everybody. Um, Christian and I are going to talk about uh, what we call a software as a service broker. Um, and at the start, we want to talk about the Cloud Foundry marketplace. Currently, if you look in your marketplace, there's typically around 9 to 15 um, data services present. Um, in many cases, um, less. But Cloud Foundry is about um, getting the best developer experience. So all these developers creating new microservices. And often they do the, uh, they don't know that somebody else already uh, created microservices they're currently working on. So they do this uh, over and over, creating redundant microservices. <coughs> so um, we thought we could uh, create, um, transform this marketplace to something like a stock exchange. Um, where all these microservices could register and um, you couldn't get rid of um, a service discovery. So you can improve the developer experience um, again because you don't have to uh, repeat um, the work somebody else already did. Um. Hmm? Yep, kind of. So um, last year in Basel at the CF Summit Europe, we uh, created this software as a service broker as part of the hackathon. Um, three, three people of our company, us two, Christian uh, Müller and Konstantin Kies from um, Volkswagen Financial Services. And we won. Yeah. What's the idea behind this? Um, what did we do? Um, normally, you could say access to the marketplace. For that, we have the service brokers. But um, if you look in, in big companies like, for example, Volkswagen, um, you often have this problem that um, you have a, a lot bunch of um, developers not coming from cloud native uh, development, not coming from microservices. So they struggle with um, getting their uh, new development things to be microservices. They are not. Um, cloud-ready software to be, uh, uh, to be available. And so um, there's a lot of effort in uh, transforming the IT uh, inside of these uh, big uh, enterprise companies. And so they, they bring up their, their cloud, they bring up the, their apps to that uh, 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 platform. And often they have these regulations at the start um, where they have to um, put, automate things. And not for all the things they need, there's a service broker. And making a service broker takes time, and it has to be adjusted, there has to be uh, done stuff in, in the later on, it has to be maintenance, and you have to know about the open service broker API. So this is another um, type of, of uh, knowledge you have to have. And if you, have, uh, if you look at uh, some service broker and their, their life cycle, um, you see that it's not that easily. Um, done. And our idea was to make it easier uh, to get these services they do um, first in the marketplace to be available. Um, beforehand, you have to have for each of the, the smaller things you have to adjust to be, um, to be uh, their uh, service broker and distinct one for each service. Because you do not know if this thing, this little microservice you do, is something other people need but you have to make it transparent in this big company because you do not know the other developers, the other developer teams, because you do not know what they're doing. But maybe you have uh, shared interests. So you need this uh, workflow uh, you have to share with the others. And if you look at Service Broker, what is it doing? Um, you're a developer. You're developing an app and you're trying to, um, to make it available in the marketplace. So, uh, you you uh, try to use a service. What you go, do is you use your CLI, for example, uh, connect to the cloud controller, and um, there ask in the market, look in the marketplace what there, um, ask for some service, create a service instance. Then the cloud controller goes to this uh, awesome thing called service broker and asks, um, can you do that for me? I don't know what it is. Um, do it for me. I need some service instance for some guy. And then it creates, the service broker knows how to create this service. So it's kind of an uh, adapter to the domain knowledge of that service. 
And you get the service instance back and get credentials, maybe, if you um, make, have a bindable service for your application. So you get credentials um, inserted in your environment of your uh, application container. And then your application can use these credentials to access the service. Um, but what does that mean if you have two applications in your Cloud Foundry which have to be connected? How can you do that? And our idea was um, then to create a service broker for that, where you can register other applications to. Um, normally, you have to have domain knowledge for that, but we do not know in our uh, idea what these other applications are. So we have no domain knowledge. We only know that we want to have this application in the marketplace. So what was our first idea um, we did um, was to um, offer some service in the marketplace with which if you uh, create a service instance of it, you get the access to the service marketplace. So creating the service instance means um, to create the representation of your application in the marketplace. So you book it in your um, application's space of the application you want to offer in the marketplace and give therein um, some additional information about the service name, which should uh, be in the service uh, marketplace, um, some uh, name of the service plans you want to offer, um, things like descriptions, and some other little uh, uh, custom properties you have to add. And afterwards, um, the cloud provider can update the service broker. Um, this has to be done because there is no refetch point for the cloud controller to get to know that there is a change in the service catalog of service broker at the moment. And this uh, is a little bit of a lack, I think, in the Open Service Broker API. Um, and then um, the, the callback is then that the um, platform provider can update the service um, broker's uh, catalog so, and can then enable which persons um, should be able to see the services uh, or the new services provided now by, the service, by our service broker. So, the new instance we created is now part of the market uh, of that offering of our service broker. Um, and you can use the default changes of um, making ex uh, the service accessible only to a few organizations in your Cloud Foundry uh, deployment or all. And afterwards, you can um, and you have this new representation in the marketplace, the new service, the new service plans, and each other of the uh, organization uh, users who can see that can also uh, create a service instance of it, which means that they create uh, the connection to your service, which is only a representation at the moment. And if you then bind your, applic uh, your application to the, uh, you want to provide, to your service instance in that space where it is a provider, uh, it's uh, deployed at the moment, um, the application route is now added inside of that service instance, uh, in, uh, in the service of it, uh, offering. And we, in the draft we did in the hackathon, we also provided some basic shared credentials. So all users had the same credentials to connect, so it was only like a gatekeeper. Um, so only knowing the um, domain uh, address would not make it e uh, able to, to address it directly. And because we did it in one day. Um, and binding then the new app, uh, the created um, service instance in the consumer, consumer space meant to get um, this application route of the provided app inside of the, your environment variable uh, with the username and the password. Um, so, <coughs> If you look at the, um, at the workflow of your usage, you see the first thing you do is when you want to provide an, uh, an application is like if you do it with your service, you create a service broker, which we did with our service broker, and then it's in the marketplace. The new step here is that you have this updatable workflow if there's a new offering. Then creating after you create a service, a new one. And deleting this service means removing your app from the marketplace after all. And um, binding service is what I sa stated earlier. Afterwards, after the hackathon, we talked about it a lot. We had other thing, uh, thoughts in mind, we discussed it, and we've seen that this simple approach is not the end of, the, the, um, of that uh, story because there are several different problems. First of all, a service broker is some crucial thing 
because it has some very, the um, Open Service Broker API is a very good concept of handling services. That's the reason other platforms like Kubernetes now adopted it, because it um, is able to provide you uh, some kind of adapter to that services domain knowledge. And when you look at service bindings, this is even more crucial. Um, but I will state uh, other problems before and now. Um, first problem we see is the service usage. You have this app. This is a microservice. It's brand new. It is added to the marketplace, and it's only something in your company is available. But the other users of the marketplace don't know how to use that API, because it's something that team there did. You now have a transparent in the company that there is something, and you have a little bit description in the marketplace, but how to use it now? So the API definition, the documentation is needed to the, for the usage. So things like enforcing a documentation URI um, on service registration is something which has to be uh, thought about. So maybe when you create the offering service instance um, for your uh, application you want to offer, um, you have to have um, a field which is not optional but required to um, place in documentation URI available for the users of, um, of Cloud Foundry um, so they can get from the description in the marketplace to that link and see the documentation how to use that service if they bind one instance before they buy it. Because through uh, one benefit of this approach we used is that if you have some kind of service uh, a mechanism for um, billing uh, your service instances in the marketplace, you can build both the offering service instance as, um, as the um, consuming service instance, both differently. And one other thing which is very important for that uh, things here is if you have a REST API, think about Hatius, because Hatius brings you the benefit of being able to go through that API, explore it, and know how to use it, and that's a real benefit in this thing. But we know the enforcing documentation does not mean that you have good documentation and that, that, that it is enough. It's more like an, um, Think about you have to have a documentation thing here, we propose. The next thing is the app binding. I uh, talked about it a little bit. What does it mean? If you look at actual services like MySQL, you know what means to create a service instance is, uh, in a shared, for example, in a shared MySQL cluster, creating a database. Creating bindings means creating users for that database in that cluster. But if you have an app, a microservice, which is not something standardized, not well known, what does it mean to create a user or credentials for it? So this is some kind of special uh, domain knowledge of that service, and our service broker cannot know about that. So we have only two solutions to that. And um, first of all, um, there is the possibility to have some standardized um, binding API in that application available for, for the service broker which would mean we re-implemented uh, partly uh, the Open Service Broker API. So if you come to that uh, place that you need that, think about making a service broker. It's much more easier, maybe. Um, the other solution is to have some central SSO inside <coughs> of your Cloud Foundry deployment. Um, if you create a service uh, instance, means that you uh, create which uh, uh, for your offering, you create the, uh, uh, an information for the SSO, which grants have to be stated to users, which have to be able to uh, um, use that. And the other thing is that um, if you create a binding, you um, create a user in that SSO where you can um, add the grants, or you have an existing user and add these grants to it. This can be done by our service broker because this SSO is something you can standardize. You can have a standardized way to interact. Only the name of the, of the grants and the list on which grants are added is new. And then the application has only to have the knowledge about how to use this standardized, centralized SSO. And this is the same for all applications. So this is something that can be done. Um, when you think of 
uh, data services, you often have a different differentiation between shared uh, instances and uh, dedicated instances. Shared meaning um, you're getting only a, a database on an existing cluster where the cluster is shared between multiple service instances. And a dedicated instance means um, you're getting a new database cluster every time you're creating a new service instance. Um, but sharing an app comes with uh, new problems. <coughs> One is um, you're now having more load on your app, which means you need to scale it. Or you might need to scale it. Um, there are many possibilities. One, uh, for once, our um, service broker could scale the app, or you could use an autoscaler to, to scale your app. But in some instances, this is not enough. If you're having a um, microservice that relies heavily on the data services to store some state, you now uh, maybe need to, to scale up this data service as well. Get a bigger cluster, get more, da uh, get more storage for your database. Um, so here you have a, a much bigger problem, which we are currently not know how to solve. Maybe, um, maybe you can see that then you're managing the service. So you, the team providing the app has to be like a managed service provider. So they have to look after that. But there is no general concept for it. Even if, if you have service brokers, you're, you're here with that problem. Now you shift that, uh, that problems you normally um, solve in, in your uh, platform t uh, providing team um, to the application providers. Yeah. Um, and with dedicated instances would mean we um, deploy a new app to CF. So we, we, our service broker needs to uh, CF push an existing application or clone the droplet or clone, clone the container. Um, but this comes also with uh, a bunch of problems. Um, we need to, maybe we need to um, worry about the state of the app. So we need also to create new data, uh, data services. Um, we need to think about backup and restore and uh, what happens if the original app developer deploys an update for this app. <coughs> These are all things our uh, software as a service broker would need to handle, um, which would make it, basically make it a um, meter orchestrator. So we decided to, to scrap this idea altogether and only go with shared instances. And the last problem is about SLAs. Who owns this service? Who, sh who cares about the service? Um, currently, you have an app developer, and he's pushing his app and um, ma maintaining his app, but he's not um, guaranteeing you uh, an uptime. Not as a service, maybe he's caring um, about the uptime for himself, but not for everybody else. So who, who owns the service? And who's liable if it, if it goes down and my app goes with it? Who, need I to, uh, who can I contact if I need support? And uh, where can I find any more information about how to use a service? <coughs> and uh, maybe uh, the roadmap of of upcoming features or feature requests. Um, we have two solutions for that as well. The first one is uh, the same um, as for the um, service usage, enforcing the API documentation and enforcing documentation for other services as well. And um, also adding a um, custom property on the service registration for the uh, a co a contact to the uh, owner of the service which we can just play in the marketplace description. Yeah, the problem elsewise would be that um, each user of some um, offering in the marketplace, which is provi uh, provided by our service broker, would go to the platform team and say, hey, your service is not working. And then they have to say, yeah, but it's not from us. Um, contact, please, these people. So you have the, some throughput there, which is really not very necessary if you can contact, make the direct contact. And also if you can make the SLA visible to the user, hey, it's not that production ready now. Yeah, that's an important thing to, to communicate. There is something, but we need time to make it production ready. Or you, if you're interested, you can try it. And if, if you're more uh, into it, we can make a service broker out of it. And um, our code is on GitHub. Um, we hope for contributions from you. 
um, uh, for bug fixes docs, um, we not uh, uh, produced all the features we talked about now because there was this big discussion where we had to look into what is really needed, um, what's the feedback of your community, and that could be your best contribution to us. Um, talk with us, um, bring in your uh, ideas about it, um, what do you think is worthwhile to, to follow up, um, what, is, what could we skip, um, what's your opinion about it, and I would hope for the questions answers to be your first possibility to contribute to us. So uh, that was our talk. Um, if you want to contact us, you can reach us here or on the GitHub and uh, now here directly if you want to. And we're around um, until tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Or uh, some things you want to contribute to us, say to us? Maybe with a microphone. Um, I was just wondering if uh, Cred Hub solves the credentials problem you mentioned um, earlier. No, it will not, because um, the problem is we do not know um, how to create the credentials if you do not know how, to, uh, how the application does that. So that's the big problem. We do not know the domain of, the, uh, of what is a user what are credentials in the service? If you look at Redis, for example, you have no user, you only have that secret. Um, if you look at MySQL, you have a com more, widely more complex system of user and uh, things. And if you look um, uh, with uh, shared and dedicated services, um, some service instance, some user uh, of, uh, of a shared instance means something very uh, different than a, uh, with a dedicated one. If you have a de dedicated cluster, for example, this could be some administrative user or some, only some user um, who is able to connect to some database and so on. So it's uh, cascading there. With a service broker, you can manage this because you can specify the, um, the special um, interaction between uh, the user and the um, and the service because you have this adapter logic and um, which we cannot provide because we do not know what is needed Other questions Then thank you for your uh, attendance and uh, hopefully we will hear from you later on. Thanks